Hi, my name is Adam and welcome to WebWalks, a channel where I talk about online privacy, security and web design. First of all, I'd like to thank you all very much for the feedback I received on my first video. I really appreciate what you said. And just one thing I'd like to point out, I plan to film all the videos outside in nature because it's a nice reminder to be respectful to the planet we are on and I think it's also a nice contrast to all the technology stuff we talk about here to actually be here outside. So in this episode I'd like to talk to you about online tracking. How is it done? And it's very simple actually, technology wise, but I think it's clever and it's also a bit hackish. So. In our example, we'll pick a malicious company, let's say Wix.com, and we'll discuss how they track the users. Okay, so programmers at Wix fix a Google as their tracking company service. Okay, so they log into Google Analytics and they copy the code. It's a very short JavaScript code that they have to embed to every page they want to have the tracking on. And because we are in 2018, they don't have to manually put it on every site, they just have some, <coughs> some builder that, that builds the websites for them, so they just put it on one place. Okay, so what's in the JavaScript code from Google? It's a JavaScript that calls another JavaScript from Google and then there are some functions. The JavaScript that is loaded from Google is a very, very large file. You can actually see it if you open a website that is tracked by Google Analytics and you find the URL for Google. Uh, I think it's Google Manager something slash gtag.js. They use this gtag thing now, so I'll talk about it later. And this JavaScript is quite a large file. If you want to prettify it using online tools, tools that take a minified version of JavaScript and make it a bit more readable, but you won't be able to read it uh, that much because all, are, all the functions are renamed to letters and numbers and whatever. So anyway, it's a very, very large file that does a lot of detection on your system, a lot of reading of the variables in your cookies that they made previously. They also check if you are logged into Google so they can connect this visit on your Wix site to your Google account. And then they test a lot of stuff. If you are on phone, what's your resolution? They run a lot of stuff in this JavaScript code. They execute it in your browser because Wix told your browser to download this script from Google. So it does all the computation, tracking and reading, and then it uses a JavaScript function to, dy to dynamically create a new image element, okay? Uh, they actually use JavaScript to create a new IMG tag in, on the page in your browser. It creates this image tag. And the very nice trick that they do here is that to, to bypass the cross-site server uh, code execution that's actually prohibited in the browser to run foreign JavaScript on the current page, they actually do this trick with the image and they create an empty image and say that the source of the image that should be pulled from somewhere is some Google server slash something and now they use get parameters now get parameters are stuff that you see sometimes in URLs and websites and it could be I don't know it could be a weather site you check the weather on it could be weather.com slash country equals US so you visit the website and they get this parameter from the URL and they understand that you want to get the result for US and these parameters you can actually have many 
there is almost no limit because URLs can have the five megabytes of tags in them, so you can have an unlimited amount of, of these parameters. And what Google does, or any other company that makes the image tracking hack, is that they call the image and in the parameters of the image they want to get, or your browser thinks that it wants to get, they fill in the data they collected with the JavaScript your browser called. So let's revise it. Wix tells your browser to download this malicious <laughs> JavaScript from Google. The JavaScript does all the tracking. It gets your language, browser size, everything. Then it creates an image and says to your browser, hey, let's make this image and the address for the image will be google slash screen equals and the data they collected for the screen resolution. Next tag, uh, language equals and the language they collected in your browser. And they make all of the parameters like this from the data they collected and they just put it on your website, in your browser, on the website. And what happens is that your browser says, okay, I take this image and I'll try to load it from your server. So they simply, your browser simply thinks it's regular image. So they requested this address from the Google server. And there uh, it could be any, any server language of Google's choice. But this could be simply done even on like PHP thing. They could just grab the parameters from the URL and save them in a database with your data, with your identifier number or whatever. And then they can use native PHP functions to output back to the requesting browser an image. And because if you, uh, if you think about it, this needs to be very, very fast. They don't want to block your connection or anything or your traffic to lock your traffic this needs to be very fast so they uh, produce one uh, th they produce a very small image that's one pixel wide and one pixel tall and it's usually transparent so they can just put it on your on the website where it's at and no one will recognize it and this is actually called pixel tracking and um, Basically, it, it tricks your browser into thinking that you need an image and the source of the image is actually the data. And requesting the image from the Google server gives them the data and then they, they return back the image so it's valid and your browser doesn't produce an error. And this pixel tracking is very popular. It happens also in marketing and it's very popular especially in the newsletter because a lot of marketing people send newsletters and they put these fake images inside the newsletter and that's the reason why a lot of email providers that you might use have this button that says load images in this email and it's there just for this reason because they know that companies use images to track the data and what can newsletter people do with this message? They can uh, just, uh, for example, they can know that you read the email because they can say that the image is whatever, 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 dot com slash some random number and put it in your email. And if your browser, uh, if your browser sees it, then makes the request for their server with the random number and they logs in this request and they know that this exact email has requested the image hence this exact email has been read or viewed at least by the recipient so it's used in uh, online marketing and it's done uh, it's also used for tracking users across the websites and yeah uh, you can use the image or you can use any other tag that has the ability to load external content from somewhere and uh, 
if you return back some valid data like transparent image or some string that's that's valid it's it's legit code and your browser doesn't think it's something suspicious and you don't yeah you actually yeah you don't actually loading something from another server you just use it to send the data somewhere else so yeah you can actually test this if you open the wix.com website and you open it preferably in the incognito or private or anonymous mode and then right click uh, in, in the, on the blank page and open inspect element and there you can select the network tab of the of the inspect inspector window and then if you reload the wix.com website and if you select images in this network tab of the inspect window you can scroll through and see a very very small images of bytes on size and you can see that there is like screen resolution of your browser language of your browser as address of these images and this is what a lot of browser plugins aims to prevent you know they block the block they have a list of servers that use this tracking and they block the connection to the servers or some of them block uh, this uh, one pixel or two pixel sized images uh, none of the methods is actually bulletproof but it's uh, it's a nice thing to have and you can actually use uh, add-on called privacy badger that does this thing or you can use ublock origin currently the best ad blocker that won't eat up your cpu or ram to block the ads and you can selectively choose which elements of the website you want to hide okay so that's it for this episode and I would be very glad if you would leave me a comment or give me a message somehow to know what you think about it and or some next uh, questions you have. And if you want to get in touch with me or if you want to get my encryption key or if you, like, if you want to support what I do, you can find all the information down in the description at the very bottom or if there, if there is nothing for some reason or it doesn't work, you can find all the info on these addresses. Uh, both of them have the same co same content and they are mirrored and the top one is rahnoha.com slash thanks.txt and the bottom one is gitlab repo okay so thank you and see you next time